So yeah, I was just minding my own business, right? Playing this Capstone Zorro game, thinking I'm gonna make a video on it, and I can't beat the first level. And this thing lets you save scum, see, it's a Prince of Persia knockoff, right? And this thing is so bad, so foul, so antithetical to the concept of entertainment that the demon just up and left. I don't know where he is now, but that was too much for him, just a little too spicy. Demons, you say? Did you ever hear? Oh man, this game, like, I don't even think I can get a video done on it, it's so bad. It's the worst Capstone game, can you believe that? What's Capstone? It doesn't matter, listen, I'm killing time here, you know? You gotta get through the first minute of the video without strung profanity, or else YouTube demonetizes it. And my prison wallet's running a little low, you know what I mean? No? Well, anyway, now that we're into it... Don't get me wrong, Hexen is, from a technical perspective, amazing. What it did with the Doom Engine, right, improving on what Raven did with Heretic, it's got an inventory system, it's got that nasty hack that lets you look up and down, it's got jumping and therefore annoying platforming, it's got the hub system letting you travel seamlessly between levels through portals. They didn't try to do the thing that Stripe did where it seemed like they were naturally connected. Visual effects, sliding and rotating sectors, earthquakes, scripting, levels that are more detailed and have more impressive architecture than anything seen before in the Doom Engine, Hexen might as well be a totally different ball game in a lot of respects. So why do I hate it? It's all in the gameplay. Now, Hexen is an intricate creature. It has a lot of quirks that make it special. And all those people who bitched at me for using GZ Doom for the Doom-related videos in the past, it's your lucky day, because for this video I wanted something a little more accurate, closer to the original experience. And my first idea, of course, was Chocolate Hexen. But now nah, I wanted something with mouse look and proper widescreen. Normally I wouldn't want mouse look, but I feel like Hexen has a bit more verticality, and also requires you to be able to see as much as humanly possible. So, in my search for the perfect port to satisfy my needs, I came across a fork of Chocolate Doom using some stuff from Crispy Doom and Doom Retro. It's called Russian Doom. That's right, we're doing a Hexen video and a Slavjag video. Happy 300k, kids! I really like this port, and despite some small but probably fixable issues I had, which we'll get into, but otherwise it's a wonderful Vanilla Plus experience. Too bad that experience is Hexen. Developed in 1995 by our old friends at Raven Software, hallowed be their names, may they be delivered swiftly from the Call of Duty mines, amen. Hexen was released on PC, Sega Saturn, PlayStation, and the Nintendo 64, so while it wasn't ported to as many systems as Doom, it was one of the first games I've ever heard of to get a full cross-platform release on all the major consoles, excluding the Sega Saturn, of course. I don't think that was a major console. Raven Software, after finishing Heretic, wanted to make something a little different and more ambitious. They wanted to go beyond Heretic. Uh-huh. Ah. Yeah, okay, I deserve that. Be right back. I beat Heretic on the hardest skill, so I thought I'd go through Hexen the same way. On skill 5, though this port has a skill 6, and if I ever find any information on why that is or what it means, I'll be sure to tell all of you. Maybe it respawns monsters, which is a funny thing, because Hexen already spawns Etans randomly forever in every level, so that's... So irritating. Like, I'll be fighting something else and suddenly I'll get sucker punched by one of these two-headed dildos. They're barely even a threat because they're only melee. It's just that Hexen fills rooms with them. Skill 6 doesn't actually respawn monsters. I think it makes projectiles faster and more deadly, but that's all I've been able to find out about it. Skill 5 basically means no cheats and fast monsters. Okay, cool. I don't know any of Hexen's cheats anyway, and it's not like I have a console like in GZ Doom. According to the manual, humans have somehow learned to respect the awesome power of magic, and somehow this led to a disciplined and orderly society where every citizen knows their place, and where the vast majority of common men are held in thrall to a few ruthless, powerful leaders wielding magical powers and arcane artifacts, these men overshadow every other human force on Kronos, suppressing individual thought and action in the name of the greater good. The greater good. Shut it! Why am I saving this place again? Long, long, long story short. Three factions rule, and each class in the game is representative of one of them. The Legion, the Arcanum, and the Church. Korax, the second Serpent Rider, brother of Heretic's Despairal, cut some deals with them so they can become immortal, and only three humans, Baratus, Daedalon, and Parias, survived, and now they're out for blood. 
The fighter is the stronger class with melee and better armor. The mage is better at long range but physically weak, and the cleric is the in-between. There are a few differences between classes, like how useful armor is. Each of the three armor pickups will help a specific class more. If you think I'm doing three playthroughs of this game, one for each class, no. 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 I've played through Hexen all the way a few times, and I don't recall ever beating it with the mage, just the fighter and the cleric. See, I like the fighter's melee weapons, especially that axe. Feels nice. And the cleric's serpent staff that leeches health. But I have a practical reason for picking the mage, which is that it has a starting weapon that has a ranged attack instead of... not that. And the Aphrits, these reskinned red gargoyles from Heretic, appear in the first level, and I hate meleeing them every time. It's a pain. The mage has this wand, and it doesn't do very much damage. The first enemy you meet, the Ettons, take between seven and nine shots to bring down. There's a bit more to the weapon that we'll get to in a little while. If you are going to play Hexen, I recommend going into the options and setting up some quick keys in your inventory, especially for the Quartz Flask, the Fletchets, the Crater of Might, which replenishes all your mana, and the Discs of Repulsion. The Fletchets especially, they are incredibly useful. Each class uses them differently. The mage just drops them and they explode. The Cleric uses them as a poison area of effect bomb, and the fighter tosses them like a grenade. You'll find them all over the place, and they're too weak to do much individually, so I usually drop three or four at a time. Now that we have all that surprisingly intricate class-based stuff for a Doom Engine game out of the way, it's time to get into the meat and potatoes of Hexen. The first level will introduce you to the game's new tricks. Breakable glass, incredibly effective atmospheric effects, walls that spin around and shoot fireballs at you, death traps everywhere, and if you're not careful, falling damage and crushers, but very different from what you're used to in the Doom engine. You'll meet a million Ettons in this level and a few gargoyles, and learn that sometimes the game needs you to think a little outside the box. Break glass to find secret rooms, because there's no secret count, secrets aren't marked, about half the game is a secret the first time you play it. I've gone through Hexen a few times, and usually my playthroughs start and end... right here. Greetings, mortal. Are you ready to die? Meet Korax, Serpent Rider, brother of our friend Desparrow. I don't see the resemblance. Maybe he looks like his mother. The Seven Portals is the worst introduction to Hexen's worst mechanics. I'm gonna give you a rundown of what you have to do in this hub, comprised of four maps. The Seven Portals, Guardian of Ice, Guardian of Steel, and Guardian of Fire. I know how to get through this hub like second nature, because after enough times it starts to make sense, and at that point I suggest seeing a mental health professional. Before anything, you'll have to fight a horde of Ettons with your wand. If you're playing on a lower skill, the game will give you the second of four weapons that your class will get, but you gotta wait if you're playing on hard. Here's the thing about the mage's wand though, and something the manual won't tell you, it's like a tiny little magic railgun. The shots are weak but they go through any enemy and hit the one behind them. So you'll line them up, and it's still old-ass Doom Engine AI, so they'll go single file at you, and you can blast three, four of them at a time. This weapon never stopped being useful because it's practically a hit scan. The first time Hexen player will invariably be screaming, Where the fuck am I supposed to go? Well, kids, you're lucky I'm here to lay this all down. First, door opens here, and you go to the Guardian of Ice, fight some Ettons, hit a switch, and step on a platform that has a little sword outline pointing at it, or else you get crushed. Then, that takes you back to the Seven Portals, where another one of these doors open, and you have to hit a switch to open a door to a portal to the Guardian of Steel. And also, a monster closet with a Chaos Serpent. The Chaos Serpents are one of the worst enemies to deal with when Fast Monsters is on, because of how fast they shoot projectiles. And kids, when I said I didn't want to do the expansion, Death Kings of the Dark Citadel, here's why. Yeah, fuck that noise. But Civi, you have to do every expansion for every game ever because you did the Duke Nuke. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Oh, you did it now, boy. Hey kids, it's your boy Civi here, and the DSC has mandated that to maximize their dumb nerd profits, I have to appeal more to the Zoomers. I mean, what are they like? Is it old FPS games? Oh! <laughs> 
These are real bugs. <laughs> Freeze! This is a real prison, and me and the boys are gonna try to survive the next 50 hours locked up here. Uh, yeah, it looks like they're getting stuck in a room and being tortured, and I feel like I'm already on that wavelength, but whatever. I got a hundred mystery buttons here, and one of them will set me free, or possibly solve the puzzle on the seven portals, but most of them won't. And I know that at least one of them will bury me alive in these creepy reject blank collectible vinyls they're piping directly into my cell. I'm excited. Let's do this thing. And also another door opens with an identical room that will have the portal to the Guardian of Fire, which is the one I take first. Slay the efforts, grab the Ice Shard spell, which I hate. I hate the Ice Shards. I hate them from the bottom of my soul. This weapon is nothing but a hassle, and I hate the fact that I have to use it for all of this hub and some of the next one. It is... Imagine a magical shotgun, except it freezes enemies, so you know, in this crowded field of monsters, you have to make sure to hostile la vista it before you can hit anything else, and the damage it does ranges from, eh, I guess you can freeze an Enten in two hits to, nah fam, four or five hits, waste that mana, fuck you. Except if you're right in the enemy's face, and then I don't even think it spawns the attack, you just hear a whoosh and it does the max amount of damage. Which is cool and all, but I picked the non-melee class hex, and the one that shouldn't require me to be as close as possible to the enemy because my armor sucks? The wand may take longer, it may be more tedious, and the constant puts me into a trance-like state where I'm having a kind of out-of-body experience. I'm stuck with this shit spell, and it doesn't even do something cool like leech health. Now that you've got your weapons for this section of the game, it's time for the endless ball-breaking item and switch hunt portion of the video. Skip to this time code to avoid the item and switch hunting bullshit. You go through the Guardian of Fire, press the switch that tells you one-third of the puzzle has been solved on the seven portals, press this door with a stone face on it, wait for the bridge to collapse, kill some A-freights, jump over here to avoid the collapsed bridge, grab the flame mask, go to the Guardian of Steel, suffer the centaurs, who can shield themselves and deflect attacks back at you, but only your ice shards, and sit and wait and wait, and maybe use your fletchets to deal with them with any kind of speed. Shoot through this door that is only open for about a second, but there's a bunch of monsters behind it, so that's a slug, too. Run up the stairs, go down the elevator, hit a switch to solve one-third of the puzzle on the seven portals, then go back up the elevator, run down the stairs, hit the bull switch, run back up the stairs, go back down the elevator, past the wall that moved that you had no indication could or would move if you hit that one switch, hit the switch, solve one-third of the puzzle on the seven portals, run back to the seven portals, go through another door that opened that leads to the Guardian of Ice, Die to the Wendigos, because on this skill they fire their projectiles so often and so fast that you will die. Get killed by these lit sectors that crush you because there's ice physics now, and they're tough to avoid. Go to the Guardian of Ice, get crowded by Ettons, and go through all the healing items because the game hadn't given you discs of repulsion yet. Run down the hall, open the doors the light swords are pointing to, place the fire mask, grab the fire key, run across the hall, survive the Wendigos and the falling ice, hit a switch in the corner, go for the steel key but miss because of the ice physics, grab the steel key, go back to the Guardian of Fire, open the fire fire key door, run down the hall, and stab the cook. Fight through, take the teleporter to get about 10 feet away, hit the switch to raise the stairs on the seven portals, hit a switch that instantly teleports you back to the seven portals, run up the stairs, hit the switch, go back to the Guardian of Steel, use the steel key to get through the other side of the map, which is identical to the first, go back down the elevator, hit the switch, and it says, you have to find another switch. happens every goddamn time I play this game. You might realize that you've already hit a switch that allows you to leave this section of the game and proceed to the Shadow Wood. But the game's not gonna tell you this, it's buried in scripting that I don't personally know how to decompile and read, but anyone playing this for the first, second, third, maybe even fourth time is gonna be stuck in this wild switch hunt until they luck out and find their way to the end. It is needlessly cryptic, and so back on the Guardian of Steel, you hit a switch to move a wall behind the steel key elevator to hit the next switch, which says that more stairs have risen on the seven portals, which leads to a switch that says a door is opened on the Guardian of Ice, which leads to the most bullshit part of this entire game. Now, 
if you can get through that and the Steel Crusher room and get to the center of the Guardian of Steel, you can pick up a torch. But no, really, stones grind on the seven portals. So we go back to the seven portals, where these walls that have teased me since I started this game, which I can only barely sometimes shoot through, open up, and there's a couple of items in the water, and that's the end of the trail, you think. Time to leave. No, because you missed the exit to the secret level. You see it? Do you see it? The portal? It's right there. But you wouldn't see it because it's invisible. So imagine, right, that you didn't know when you hit this one switch all the way back here from when you were still thinking you needed that steel key for something. This all led to what appears to be nothing, but which actually is a secret portal to Bright Crucible, which is a nightmare of a map full of the powered-up chaos serpents that shoot toxic goo at you. A million enemies, a million projectiles. I'm using the Wings of Wrath, which you get at the very end of this hub, because once activated, they let you fly until the end of this section of the game. And... In Bright Crucible, you solve a puzzle by getting a gem called Despero's Heart. Yeah, you remember him? Nice guy. Anyway, you get his heart, you put it on a pedestal, and it raises some stairs to get back to the original area I don't need stairs to get to because I can fly, and it opens an area with a horde of enemies and a bunch of items that are really cool and helpful and replace all the resources that I use to get to this room full of items. This is what all of the secret levels in Hexen do. Do not go to them. They are bullshit. The Seven Portals hub is somewhat infamous because of how it's a whole bunch of switch hunting nonsense that guides the player about as well as a one-legged cat in heat in a field of other hornier cats. It sucks, I hate it. And the rest of the hubs range from being somewhat better to being only marginally better. My servants can smell your blood, human. Oh, oh. God. Normally I can blaze through a game in a couple of days in one or two sittings, but this one I had to take breaks. I spent about four days going through Hexen just because it's so fucking demoralizing. I'm not gonna go through all the hubs like Seven Portals since none of them are as obtuse for the most part. There's so many monsters and it becomes a chore to deal with all of them because a lot of the time they can't even touch you. However, the stalkers... Oh, these little bastards. in an engine that doesn't have any kind of underwater that an enemy couldn't disappear underwater but here we are these things pop out like dianagas and dark forces and they can be stun locked with the wand which is tedious but kind of satisfying because fuck them You can freeze them quick, too, if you're on your toes, but don't waste the mana. This whole section is about traveling to a swamp, some maze-like caves, and some maze-like wastelands to gather keys and hit six switches, and there is actually some kind of idea of what you're trying to open with these six switches. Though putting these boxes here and giving them the same textures as the key doors in this hub is a little fuck you. You might think it's more complicated because it says one-sixth instead of one-third, but it's not, even if some of those switches are placed behind statues. Yeah, fuck off, you. Uh, you. On the Shadow Wood, you'll get the major his most useful weapon, the Ark of Death, a lightning spell that, well, it's just good. Except for how sometimes projectiles in Hexen are so fucking big that they can't fit through spaces where I could parallel park a Zeppelin. But aside from that, it can one-hit most things, including the centaurs, whose shields won't do a damn thing about it. From now on, I only use the ice shards if I'm out of green mana and I can't wand it away. So I'm going around, hitting switches, killing monsters. It's not as convoluted as the previous hub, but you know, you still have to run back and forth between areas to do things, get keys, find those doors, kill everything, which is a lot better with the Ark of Death. But the Caves of Cersei can fuck right off. Dark, confusing, messy, filled with death pits. Fumble around in the dark a little while and you find what you need to get to another part of the Wastelands map, and then... I nearly cancelled the episode when this happened. So I'm in the wastelands, and... What the fuck? 
So there are these spikes that come out of the ground that anyone and their frail old grandmother in a walker could avoid. And I think this is one of the few bugs I found in this otherwise excellent port, but it's one that stopped me dead in my tracks. I tried reloading, I couldn't try no clipping, not that I'm sure it would have helped, because cheats are disabled on this skill and I don't have a console to work with. So I'm stuck. Literally stuck. Because some weird bug makes it so these spikes globally affect the player and get me stuck forever and sometimes it even crashes. So I'm wondering, do I go through the absolute banality of fighting through hundreds of monsters again by loading my save that I have at the beginning of the Shadow Wood so that I might avoid this when I take my second trip into the wastelands? It could just as easily happen again. And from my experience, it would happen again. In fact, it happens in every map that has these spikes. This has Slavjank written all over it, except unlike mid 2000 shooters from former Soviet bloc countries, I have editing tools at my disposal to slice hex and open and giddily play with its insides. So I open the map and I delete every single spike trap from it, and then I have to delete the separate save file for that map that tells the game where all the things are, because the engine generates a save file specifically for that map in the hub, and then I load my save from the separate map in the hub, travel in, kill all the enemies again, and progress like nothing ever happened. Future Civi here, this issue has already been patched out. But it is entertaining. Whatever, it's done! Now I can finish hexing in this video! <laughs> Once you're done with the puzzles in this section, it lets you go to the secret level, the Sacred Grove, which is just a big open room with some items to help you, but this time it's a lot easier than Bright Crucible. There is a switch that tells you that it opens a door on the Forsaken Outpost, which is totally helpful, because you know what that is, because you've been- No wait, you haven't been there yet! It's two hubs away! On to the boss map. A boss? Yes, finally, after a few rooms full of traps and hordes of enemies, my god. My god, it's the same problem as Heretic, which I suppose disappears in Hexen 2 because the limits of the early 3D Quake engine wouldn't let you throw 50 enemies at a player without setting your primitive graphics card on fire. Anyway, here's the boss, the Death Wyvern. Wyvern. And while it hits like a truck full of anvils, I have lightning. <laughs> On to the next. Worship me, and I may yet be merciful. Then again, maybe not. The game's taking the kid gloves off now, and this first section outside the seminary is brutal. The Disciples of Despair have gotten a colorful reskin and throw a chain of low damage projectiles at you that kind of sort of home in but mostly just bob around it effectively. There's an interesting inventory item that I realized I never really used, which is the Dark Servant, which will spawn a friendly Molitor from Heretic to help you. He doesn't last long. There's also this dispel thing that teleports monsters, and yes, before someone leaves a comment, I know you can turn monsters into pigs. That's not exactly helpful when you can turn three of the 50 monsters facing you into pigs. And the boots of speed, which I think you can guess what they do. The quest in this area is fairly self-explanatory. Go through this swamp and this warehouse- Oh, god damn it! Did I just get telefragged? Once you collect all the planet gems, you place them on this wall, and then the back of the chapel opens to reveal portals and three other chapels to- Oh, God damn it! Some rotten level designer scripted this wall to lower and spawn enemies when you approach it, every time, sometimes with even stronger enemies, dog shit, fuck you! From now on, the name of the game is walk into a room, a dozen or more monsters pop out, you kill them, you find a switch or an item, and you leave. Some places are worse than others. So the three other chapels, the Griffin Chapel, the Wolf Chapel, and the Dragon Chapel, all require you to find three switches in each. And in the hub, you can see your progress on hitting these switches. The Griffin Chapel requires you to go back to the Wolf Chapel and the Dragon Chapel to hit switches that will open doors in the Griffin Chapel, and nothing will tell you that this is happening, but it does. 
It's a shitty excuse to get you back there. <laughs> what monastery? Huh? You mean the seminary? The level you call the seminary? I'm sure that won't cause any confusion. The Wolf Chapel has a giant room that populates itself with these dark bishops, and maybe this wouldn't be so boring if I didn't use the mage's staff to slowly kill everything, but if it ain't broke... The Dragon Chapel is the worst. The main hall is stuffed with every monster you've fought. There's even a pit in the middle with stalkers in it. Isn't that fun? At some point in this section, they throw the Slaughtors at you, which are centaurs with more health who can fire a projectile. I feel bad for anyone who doesn't have the lightning. On your final trip to the Griffin Chapel, you'll go through this long room of moving walls, which is super impressive for the Doom Mansion. Must have been a nightmare to make. At some point, and I can say that because this whole thing is a blur, a tiny brown spot in a sea of Ettons and centaurs, I get the Blood Scourge. The fourth and final weapon of each class is scattered throughout the maps. You pick it up in three pieces and the weapon is fine, I guess. It shoots red magic that wrecks crowds of enemies. The path the projectiles take is unpredictable and kind of unreliable. Once you're done hitting switches, you can go back to the seminary and fight the Hares... Oh, god damn it. Heresiarch? I have no idea how this boss works exactly. I throw lightning at him and eventually he dies in a grand spectacle with an earthquake. That's... You know what? That's pretty cool. The secret level opens up now, and it's another small map with a bunch of items you're gonna use when trying to get those items, so it's really, like, not a net gain or anything, I... Why? You have played this game too long, mortal. I think I shall remove you from the board. He wishes. No matter how much of a pain in the ass getting through this castle is, and this is the first part of the hub. It's called Castle of Grief. I don't know what I expected. There's a portal on the edge of the map that takes you to the Forsaken Outpost, but if you're looking for that door you opened, tough shit, you won't be able to get to it till you, before you find a key. So go back to the Castle of Grief and... This map inexplicably also has those spikes in it, so I gotta open it up in the editor and delete those, and also I'm deleting all the enemies I've already killed because I really, really, really don't feel like killing all of them again. It wasn't fun the first time. Now what you have to do in this level is grab four different gears to place in the clock room so that you can activate the switch in the central tower and to do this, guess what? You have to hit switches. There are a bunch semi-hidden in the corners of the guard towers on the outside of the castle which will activate the elevators that take you to the upper level of the castle walls where there are four switches you have to hit to lower a staircase to get a gear. The other gears are out in the open, and one of them even isn't connected to a trap that shoots projectiles at you. Fun fact, you have the discs of repulsion now, and those work on projectiles. So now you travel to Gibbet, where you have to find two books to put on a bookshelf in the library to open them. Wait, I only have one book, I gotta... A door opened in the Forsaken Outpost that gives me that key I needed, and no, I don't know when that happened, just go with it. And actually, no, I'm not sure if I needed to open that door with the key, but here it is, and it opens a door that leads to a room with a horde of monsters in it, and also that door that opened from the switch in the last secret level re reveals the next secret level, which is... Uh... I get the book, and I go back to the library in the gibbet, and... What the fuck?! I guess this is happening. 
This doesn't hurt me, at least not in the context of the game, but it is really, really annoying. As hard as I tried, I couldn't replicate this issue again. So don't worry about it. Now the book opens up a thing that gives me Yorick's skull, which can be placed on a headless statue in the chapel inside of the castle, not the other 57 chapels I've already visited. And I place the skull on the statue and the environment crumbles around me in an impressive 1995 set piece that would only be topped a year later when good build engine games started coming out. And I have no idea what else this did besides that, until I go back to the central room and some water lower to show a switch that takes me to... Oh, there it is. You're in the sewer to get fucked over by stalkers. Splattered with green goo by chaos serpents and to find the dungeon key, yes? The dungeon key is in the sewers. It's like poetry, and behind a secret door. The dungeon is accessible through a closet in the gibbet, and a bedroom that is actually full of traps like a bed that crushes you. The dungeon itself is a cramped series of maze-like hallways stuffed with monsters that fucks with your ability to use projectiles because of the narrowness of the hallways, and at one point Enton starts spawning in it forever at a much higher rate than normal. This is, of course, after you hit a switch about ten times that opens a door and spawns a slaughter ten times. Why do you hate Hexen, Civvy? You leave the dungeon, return to the sewers, go back to the gibbon, and it says you hear a door open upstairs. But don't be fooled. That means you hear a narrow corner of a wall that isn't easily visible, so you better look for it, you asshole. Fuck you, Love Raven Software. And you get the axe key, which opens the door to the boss of this section, which is the Heresy Arc again. Excuse me while I deal with this. Okay, this is weird. This intermission text isn't in the second person. It's not like all the other Romero-esque story bits and the rest. It's just a quote. Well, that's ominous. Are you strong enough to face your own masters? This is hell. These are the Wraiths. They are the worst. This level is the final main hub of the game, and it is populated with what I assume is infinite Wraiths. Because I sure as hell didn't kill them all. They're floating around the entire map, and since that wasn't bad enough, they rise up from their graves to kill you too. The paths you have to take between maps in this hub are filled to the brim with Wraiths. Yes, of course I can cheese them through doorways with the wand, and I can dodge those projectiles, but I can't dodge all the projectiles in the world. There's a secret level exit in here, too, which I didn't take because I'm so very fucking done with Hexen. Oh yeah, and you can only access it before you've gone into any of the other sections, or else it closes off forever. You have a million high damage projectiles coming at you in the dark, and there's stuff from all over the ground in the environment to keep you from being able to maneuver around. I would say that this was a mistake on the part of Raven's designers, but no, they knew what they were doing. It's Raven, they're pros. They knew what they were doing, which makes it even more infuriating because they wanted you to suffer this. Three tombs. Each tomb has one of the undead faction leaders in it, and they're all themed accordingly. And they're all grueling, monotonous battles with a hundred enemies, followed by a fight with a fighter, a mage, and a cleric, all of whom have the super weapon for each class. They still don't have a lot of health, though, and spamming them with the Blood Scorch while circle strafing will usually do the trick. Although the cleric is tricky because of his awesome ghost staff. I wish I'd played as the cleric. The mage's tomb is the puzzly one where you have to match symbols according to the matching ones on the wall or the shape of the room itself. The cleric's tomb is probably the least of a hassle because it's got relatively weaker enemies to deal with, and the fighter's tomb can die in a fucking fire. Anyone down in the comments typing just lead them into the crusher in the middle? That isn't a crusher half the time, so shut up. 
Oh, you son of a bitch! Now that you have all three keys you need to get out of this wraith-infested graveyard, it's time for... The manual says that Despairal was the weakest of the Serpent Riders, which is... We'll get to that in a little while. No, we won't. This is the end of the video. Korax does not ride a serpent. Look at him. That serpent would get impaled on all of his... Did I make this joke in the Heretic video? And spoilers for the other two games in this series. The other ones, they don't ride serpents. Korax would probably impale it on his weird Giger body and idle on his... He'd need a big serpent. Moving on, I will say that the introduction to this level is stunning. Just awesome. I don't know how or why this bridge is moving like this, but this image right here, the darkness, the red sky, the impaled bodies, is striking, beautiful, and it shows that when Raven Software isn't busting my balls, they're some of the best in the business. This is one of the things that frustrates me so much about Hexen. It is so goddamn impressive from a tactical standpoint that I nerd out over like, wow, look at the sky with the parallax scrolling, and then I'm like, oh yeah, now I have to play the game. Come with me, kids. We have bosses to pants. Sure, he throws a couple hordes of monsters at you, but I've been saving my creators a mite to refill my mana. Sure, he probably has devastating attacks, but I saved my Icon of the Defender, the invincibility power up just for him. Hey, Korax! Are you ready to die? No amount of switches are putting your gnarly ass back together, you skeletal bitch. With a scream of agony, you are wrenched from this world into another, every part of your body wreathed in mystic fire. When your vision clears, you find yourself standing in a great hall. This can only be the Chaos Sphere, the source of Korax's power. With this, you can create worlds, or destroy them. By rights of battle and conquest, it is yours. Perhaps, now, a new player will join the cosmic game of power like the pawn who was promoted to queen. Such power is an illusion, my grandson. It comes with a terrible price. Yes, I... I think that's true. Thank you, past episode grandfather. I, I don't know what I'd do without... But there are other players mightier than you, and who can know their next moves? Oh, I do. I do. It's Hexen too. That hand belongs to Eidolon, the biggest and baddest of the Serpent Riders, who does not ride a fucking serpent, but he is big, and if I'm being honest, I actually enjoy most of Hexen 2, whereas Hexen is a monotonous slog through switch hunts and way too many monsters that don't need to be there. I respect what Raven did with Hexen's tech and their ambitions, but come on with this right here. God, this level is so fucking confusing. The only way it would be worse is... Oh, for fuck's sake. 